Cryptocurrency mining is the process in which transactions between users are verified and added to the blockchain. The blockchain is a public ledger that holds the records of every transaction. When a user wants to send a payment, or in some cases an item or service to another user, it requires solving a complex equation. These equations are then solved by various computer hardware known as miners. At least, this is one purpose and form of mining. Cryptocurrency is an ever-evolving industry with new technologies and ways to interact with the blockchain. The point being that this is just the basics of crypto mining and not all-encompassing. A coin that can be mined is known as a proof-of-work coin. This is a term used in opposition of proof-of-stake where transactions are validated by stakeholders. Stakeholders are people who own a certain amount of the currency and lock it in a wallet to validate transactions. While proof of stake is becoming more viable, thanks to advances in technology, it is generally considered more vulnerable to what is known as a 51% attack. A 51% attack can be executed when a validator owns more than 50% of the total volume of the coin. This doesn't mean, however, that proof of work coins or mining isn't vulnerable as well. A mineable coin can suffer a 51% attack if someone controls more than 50% of the hash power. The hash power, better known as hash rate, is the measurement of the mining hardware's ability to complete equations. More exciting than that is that it is also the measurement of how much money a miner can potentially earn. The two most important metrics for mining are hash power and power consumption measured in watts. Mining hardware requires power and power costs money. Depending on the miner's choice, this cost can be upfront in the case of solar or recurring in the case of buying from their power company. Either way, the goal is to keep your watts low and your hash rate high. Before investing into mining, you want to calculate both of these metrics. This brings us to mining hardware. There are currently four types of mining hardware. ASICs, GPU, CPU, and more recently, FPGA. ASICs stands for Application Specific Integrated Circuit. ASICs are developed for a specific algorithm. Think of the algorithm as the language used to communicate between the miner and the blockchain. The most popular cryptocurrency mined with ASICs is Bitcoin. ASICs are typically the most efficient use of power versus hash rate. However, ASICs present unique challenges for miners as follows. ASICs will only mine one algorithm. Meaning if the particular algorithm changes, the hardware becomes useless. Additionally, ASICs have no resale value. Meaning when upgrading hardware in most cases, the miner will not be able to recoup any cost of the hardware. Finally, ASICs are primarily manufactured by one supplier. This presents a unique problem for both miners and the coins. For miners, availability comes after the supplier has filled their own farms and for the coins presents a possible vulnerability in the form of the aforementioned 51% attack. GPU stands for Graphics Processing Unit. GPUs have multiple uses outside of mining and include content creation, artificial intelligence, and of course, gaming. As such, GPUs have multiple manufacturers and larger availability to the public. The most popular cryptocurrency mined with GPUs is Ethereum. GPU mining supports multiple algorithms, meaning if the coin you are mining fails or becomes unprofitable, you can move to another coin. Additionally, when upgrading hardware, the miner's old hardware has resale value on the consumer market. The downsides of GPU mining include need for additional hardware and software along with a constantly moving market to stay educated on. CPU stands for Central Processing Unit and is utilized in almost all technological applications. This means that there are multiple manufacturers and greater consumer availability. The most popular coin mined with CPUs is Monero. CPU mining, like GPU mining, supports multiple algorithms. However, CPU mining presents unique problems for miners due to the amount of CPUs able to run per rig. Both space and additional hardware per rig means the ROI, or return on investment, is typically longer than other hardware. FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array. FPGAs have multiple uses outside of mining but don't share the consumer availability of GPUs and CPUs. The FPGAs are a middle ground between ASICs and GPU CPU mining. They support multiple algorithms, have resale value, and provide good efficiency. However, the barrier to entry is going to be the miner's knowledge of computers in general, 
That, along with the availability, deters a majority of miners. Every hardware option requires software to start hashing. Sometimes referred to as a miner, the software can be confused with the owner of the hardware. For this video, we will reference it as software. Each piece of hardware requires different types of software. ASICs will typically run proprietary software with open source options being scarce. GPU and CPU mining, however, can run on multiple operating systems, including Linux, Mac, and Windows. Most miners choose to use specially designed operating systems for mining, including EthOS, HiveOS, and Simple Mining. When starting out, hobby miners will use Windows with easily obtainable software downloaded from places like GitHub. For more details on the specifics of how to mine, check the description. Mining requires a lot of hardware to complete the work sent from the blockchain. This brings us to pools, another piece of software run by various miners to combine the hash power of multiple miners into one. When mining to a pool, the miner will submit shares. Shares are a portion of the work completed compared to the rest of the miners on the pool. The pool's goal is to find a block before another miner. Once found, the amount of crypto earned will be divided among the miners participating based on their shares. The upside of pool mining is more regular and predictable revenue, with the downside being not earning the entire block reward. A block reward is the amount of a particular coin paid out to miners for solving a block. For example, a block in Bitcoin is one megabyte's worth of Bitcoin transactions. The block reward is determined by the network and changes in events known as halvings. When the block halves, the reward is reduced, typically in half. This means miners must take into account changes in reward versus price of the coin itself. Once the miner has found a block or received a payout from the pool in the currency they are mining, they must exchange it for dirty fiat to cover operational costs. The primary cost of mining is power. So typically, miners will pull enough out to pay their power bill. To facilitate these transactions, miners use various exchanges depending on the region. An exchange is simply another piece of software utilized to convert cryptocurrencies between each other and fiat. Examples could be Coinbase, Cryptocom, and Binance. Thanks for watching. If you found the content helpful, consider leaving a like and subscribe below.